Hey Plant Gang, Miles here, Paradise in a Pop, coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. And this is a little channel where we talk about house plants, how to grow them the best we can, where to acquire them, and um, I don't know, maybe some little tips and hints that I give every now and again because I've been doing it for so darn long. I don't even realize what I do sometimes that make my plants thrive so well. And I fail to bring that over to you guys. So I'm trying to do more vlogging this week of exactly what it is I do uh, day to day to take care of my plants. So anyhow, if you like all that kind of content, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. We're a bunch of plant nerds here that, you know, we just really want to do the best we can to take care of our plants. And we communicate and help each other out. We also do plant swaps too. So if you want a plant swap with me, you see something you like here, let me know. I'm, I'm willing to try that through the mail. Um, won't be ready to do it again until September because in Las Vegas we're already at 95 degrees every day. So it's a little too warm for me to be sending out or getting plants. I just feel like they're going to cook. Anyhow, today I'm going to take you through, I counted up, and I might be wrong, but I counted up that I have 33 Hoyas within my collection. So I'm going to go through and talk about, real briefly, each one of my little Hoyas and give you guys kind of a little Hoya tour. I'm probably going to leave a lot of them where they're sitting. Some of them are kind of big and I don't want to move them around. Um, so it's going to be a broken up video and we're going to go over 33 Hoyas that I have in my collection. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around and I have to water the Hoya that are behind me here. So I'm going to go through and water them while I tell you which ones I have of those. Once we get past that, we'll just go through tour in the house of what Hoyas I have. So go grab a snack, grab yourself something to drink. I got my coffee right over here. So I, I'm ready to do this morning. And relax and chill and let's do some Hoya chores and chatting. All right, gang, let's get to it. All right, gang, I got that camera turned around so you can see what I'm up to here. So I'm just gonna go through real quick here um, some of the Hoyas that I have sitting out and I'm gonna count them off. So I guess we'll go ahead and start number one with this Hoya Lisa. It's an Australis, which is a Lisa. So it's a Lisa form. It's really gorgeous. I mean, look at this plant. She is just, and the inner nodes are so close together, I can't propagate her. She refuses to be propagated. So I'm gonna cut back on her light a little bit. So maybe I can get some tendrils and try to propagate her. But that's the Hoya Australis Lisa. Go ahead and set her just right there, a little bit out of camera. We're gonna water all these guys. So Lisa's number one. The next one we'll talk about is my poor little dehydrated ecliptica here that I forgot to water and it's really paper thin. I hope it bounces back. It doesn't look too sad. It's soaking right now, but that's my Hoya elliptica. And I really think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna treat it again for uh, flat mites because it's getting this again. And it's the only Hoya that seems to be having some sort of weird issues. So uh, I'm gonna treat this one again with some um, sulfur treatment. So we're gonna keep her out of the tank. Uh, when I start putting things away. So that's Hoya number two is the elliptica. And the next one I've got over here is going to be the Carnosa Compacta Variegata. I don't know if you guys can read that tag with the sunshine there. She's looking a little shrivelly. She's ready for some water. So we're going to go ahead and water her. I'm going to put her over here by the tangamus just to keep her on the tray so we don't have spillage. You can see I've got a few other plants out there that, uh, aren't necessarily Hoya, and it's only because they need some water too. And I also water some of these the same way I do a Hoya, like that vanilla orchid I just gave a little water to. I'm not going to leave this Amidrium medium in the water, but it's going to get some water. Giving that Pellura some water. I'm going to give my coconut cream pie orchid some water, and uh, we're going to soak it up nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and wring that out. We've got the UT033 there, some water. I've got the Proniana Super Silver here, giving it some water. We've got a Carry Eye. We'll go ahead and give that Tangama some water. Carry Eye doesn't have a tag yet. We're going to put this Croniana right next to its friend. And this one is the Black Margin. And uh, let's go ahead and fill up my bottle. All right, let's see what we can put on this tray here. Here I've got the Hoya uh, Kaminingana. I haven't practiced that. This is a cutting I just recently got. I actually have some in propagation too. 
It was a really long piece sent to me by uh, one of you guys out there who chooses to stay anonymous, which is fine. Um, and that's going really well. And the next one I have here is the Polystaca. And the Polystaca is really, started off with this one leaf. It's been one leaf forever. Gave off this beautiful uh, leaf with this red margin. I don't know if that shows up for you guys. And now it's doing this other new leaf right here. So we're going to go ahead and put this over and give it some water. And as you all know, I soak all Hoya like succulents and orchids. I soak them all for 30 minutes. And today we're giving them uh, actually orchid food because it is spring and growth is growing. So we're going to feed them up nicely. There we go. And I think that's everybody right here. So I'm gonna let those guys sit for 30 minutes in this water and really have a chance to soak it up. See, I really overflow the tray because I do. I want them to really get an opportunity to get a good soak and fill all their leaves with water. I don't want anybody telling me they're dry after a soak. So we're gonna go ahead and let those guys soak. Like I said, I'm gonna soak this orchid. I'm not going to soak this amidrium right here, but I'm going to give it a little more water and we're going to pull it out of there. I think I can make space for one more orchid who might need watering. And I think I've got that orchid sitting right here. Yeah, you can come out. I'll just set that there. And I want to check this. So we'll bring that out. And we'll check that while we're going through these orchids. All right, gang, let me uh, take care of some stuff here. Oh, first, this is the Crimson Queen I have currently. I've actually got my Crimson Queen all chopped up in propagation. For some reason, it got root rot. I don't know, but it's doing fine in propagation. But this one, I kept these three separate because each one had a white and a green, and a white and a green, and a white and a green leaf. So I want to see if the tendrils off there come like that with the white and the green like that because it's kind of like a jumping jack oh yeah, instead of a Crimson Queen. But currently, this is the Crimson Queen. We're going to add her to the soak right over there. All right, and we'll go ahead and fill her up with water. Give this one here some water. Yeah, so I'm keeping that one separate. We'll see how it turns out. It'd be real interesting to see. Oh, here, I want to take this out of here. I did not mean to put that in there. All right, there you go. All right, gang, I'm gonna go ahead and go over these other Hoya I have over here. These three little Hoya are sitting here because they were on a, uh, well, they were on this, and it hangs on a macrame from the ceiling, but my hook failed, and these three hit the floor. So they're here now because they've got a new home in the plant room because I've uh, yet to fix the hook out there. So here we have, uh, and these are all three from Kelly Hoya. So hi, Kelly. We've got the Hoya minderensis. So it's, it's just got a little leaf damage right there. Sorry, Kelly, but otherwise it's growing like a weed. It's got a tendril all out of control. The next one over here we have is the Hoya Potsii. This one has nice big thick, chunky leaves and has a tendril starting on its own. And the Memoriae over here is just looking fantastic. Now these guys just got watered the other day because I had to repot them because of the crash. So they're not getting a soak today. They're actually doing all quite fine. So there's three more Hoyas to take off the list. Now over here I also have, oh, there they are. Two more Hoyas sitting right up there. Let's get over to those and I'll tell you what they are. All right, guys, we're over here, and we're with the Hoya fungi. This is from Jacqueline's Jungle. Hi, Jacqueline. Look how beautiful this guy's growing. It's got a new leaf coming in there. I love how the leaves come in. Let's see if that'll focus for us. It's looking great. It's looking beautiful. I'm about ready to put this on a trellis. I need to take that to the floor. And then the next one over here, I have the uh, Hoya Clan Estina. And this one's doing really fantastic. This is from one of my viewers out there who gifted this to me. Absolutely love this little Hoya, it's fantastic. And then as we slowly turn around here, I don't wanna make you guys dizzy, but I do have Hoya now that are kind of stationary. And back there, you guys can kind of see my Hoya latifolia. I think that's what we're calling it these days. And I have it started on a trellis and it's starting to trellis up. I've got this wild tendril that I could get back over on the trellis. And uh, so that's the Hoyas that are kind of mounted right over in that area. Over here, I have my Hoya Compacta Carnosa. And this thing has just been growing slow, so slowly. She's going to get some water today. She's on the list here. Right next to her, we have my 
uh, Hoya obovada, which is a gift from a friend, a plant friend, and also half from a plant swap. And I put them together and made this beautiful big... Look at that. Ah, looks amazing. I love it. I just love it. I love this leaf. Look how round and perfect those are. It's just one of my very favorite little Hoya over here. And then right next to it is my Hoya publicalix, which is what I would call OOC. It's out of control growing up that pole right there, but it's looking quite beautiful. Now if I turn around real quick, over here I have my Hoya australis. This is just the regular green form. And it's uh, the only Hoya so far that I've bloomed. It sits in the south-facing window. It had tendrils growing out and everywhere, but I had to cut it back because it was time to clean the air conditioner for spring. And uh, it just needed to be trimmed back. And actually, oh hi, I see myself in the mirror. Anyhow, actually, I needed to uh, do that so I could go ahead and take it apart. And over here, I can show you guys. Right here is what I had to chop off. These are all tendrils from that Hoya Australis. And if, I don't know if you guys can see in there. Yeah, you can see it. They're already rooted, so I've got these up uh, $5 a cutting if anyone's interested and want some crazy Hoya Australis that will uh, bloom for you. It's got peduncles and everything. All right, gang, let's move on to other Hoya. All right, gang, I'm over here in my living room now. And the first two little Hoya that I come across is this lovely Hoya Croniana splash. This lovely leaves it has almost little turtle six packs or something going on there. Just absolutely adore this little guy. I think that also came from Kelly's Hoya. And then next to it I have just the regular Carnosa Green, which is quite beautiful actually. It's a little dusty. I think I need to take it to the sink and give her a little bath, but she's doing fantastic. And this was a gift from one of my uh, students at a houseplant class. All right, let's go to the other part of the living room. All right, gang, here in the window, I have hanging my Hoya Linearis, which is actually doing quite well. It's a very full little pot. It's one of those Hoya that crashed on me, and then I turned it into a full pot with propagation. So just because a plant's failing on you guys, don't worry. You can always try to save it via propagation. Not always will it work, but sometimes it does, so you have to take that chance. Moving on here, and you guys don't get the best light here. I'm really sorry about that, but I'm not taking these guys down. They were just watered the other day, so they don't need water. Here I have my Hoya Paculata, which is from Kelly's Hoyas. It's a lovely, lovely, thick, cardboard-feeling leaves. I love that plant. It's kind of fuzzy, too. It's feeling really good. Next to that, we have the Hoya Waliana. And this one I had kept in a lot of light, and it had really purple sun stress. Now that it's over here getting just regular uh, sunlight, the leaves are coming in kind of splotchy, sun-stressed, and I'm really digging it. I really like it. Because, yeah, before you guys can see it, it's kind of a purplish color, which I also like. Don't get me wrong. Right next to that, I have my Hoya Carii. As you can see, there's you know, a few yellowing leaves lately. I think I'm going to have to take that one apart and find out what's going on there. There might be a bit of root rot going on in there. This tends to happen. Next to that, we have the Hoya... Crimson Princess, just one green leaf, but mostly variegated. Looks really sweet. This was a trade from a person who uh, took my fish, if you guys remember back when I had fish in aquariums. This was a trade I got for my fish, and I loved that one. All right, gang, let's go over to the bright spot. All right, we're here in my little plant corner. Here's that Monstera Peru you guys might have noticed lately that I just uh, staked up on that, on that pole. It's looking really good. I'm gonna stake it a little more uh, in about two weeks. Just get it tighter up against that pole, but I want to make it a slow process. Anyhow, we're over here checking Hoya. Although I have to check everybody. I see these Peperomias need a drink soon, too. The Ancana's looking good. Anyhow, the Peperomia I want to grab out of here is one with the most stunning veination. And it's put in here because it really likes the light. And that is my Hoya Crassiopeshula. And look at those leaves. It has really taken off for me since I've got it. It's got a new leaf developing there. Looks like some more new leaves coming in there. And it's just got this wild tendril and it is just going crazy. I just love this one. Let me go ahead and set that one back in there. Yeah, and I'm just letting this little guy go in here and scamper around and see what it climbs and does. Um, it won't make too much of a mess. And if I have to cut it out of there, oh no, I'll have propagations. The other Hoya here is this one right here, which is my Hoya Kisii which is a Hoya I've actually sent off to Jacqueline's Jungle. 
and she was just featuring it the other day. I'm considering it, uh, if I want to propagate it intentionally this time. Uh, last time it fell over, but this time I gave it a pull, so it's climbing, climbing, and then it's moved into this other pole over here where it's climbing, climbing, and hit the top and doesn't know where to go now. So that's what a Hoya Australis does, but we love it. That's a Hoya Australis Kesei. Let's go into the other room and check out the last few Hoya. But before we do, let me not forget that right behind me here we have this Hoya Carnosa Freckles. This is adorable. I love this little shape of the leaves. They're kind of stumpy. And that was growing really good. It's got a new tendril. And that one is also from Kelly Hoyas. Kelly was very generous in her uh, plant swap. This one is the Hoya Species Affinity Bertonia. And let me take it over here to light. Maybe you can appreciate it better. It's got some really nice black outer ridges of the leaves. This one's been a little bit more of a slow grower. Um, I don't know if it needs higher light, but it was in pretty high light, high humidity. I've moved it now into a darker spot to see if it'll uh, grow a little faster for me. Um, and I have taken a few cuttings of this, but I'm afraid until... Oh, look, we do have a little growth. So maybe it likes a darker spot to grow out of. Maybe that encourages it. But anyhow, I really like this one a lot. It's fuzzy. It's cute. It's got different leaves. And again, this is from Kelly Hoya. So thanks, Kelly. As we travel down, I have this cute little pink flamingo which came from my neighbor next door. Hi neighbor. And inside there is the Hoya Polynera, which is really taken off. This was a one leaf cutting in September. And I believe, yep, we've got new growth coming out of there also. So it's doing really well. I love this little fishtail Hoya. It's just so adorable. And I think it likes the slightly darker spot. You know, some Hoya, they just do not like the bright lights. When it had bright lights, it was giving me small leaves. Less light, bigger leaves. Looks nice. All right, gang. Last but not least, in the living room, I have the Hoya, what do we call this, Reticulata? It was the Parasitica Splash, but its name got changed. I really dig this one because it gets pinky splashes. If you guys can see that, it's really different. It's got this new beautiful leaf that's coming in here. It's still kind of soft, so the colors are still a little muted, but I just adore that I don't know if you can see that pinky kind of mauve -y color on the leaf in the splash. It's a really neat little plant. Yeah, this one sits on my coffee table. All right, gang, and the last Hoya in the kitchen uh, is my Hoya Wyettii. And this one is a rescue from Lowe's. I think this is one of the few Hoyas I actually bought at Lowe's. And I rescued it because it was drowned. And I brought it home and I took it out of its pot and I put it in front of a fan and I put it inside of a orchid pot and I let it dry out like in a day and ever since she has been growing beautifully for me and I did mention before that I did have my crimson queen this is the main part of it where the root rot had occurred you can see there's new roots roots already coming in there so I'll probably be potting this back up real soon and I do have some other cuttings that I took off there and as they root I'm gonna put them all into the same pot and make a nice big full pot of it all right, gang, I think we've come to the last three Hoya in my collection. Right here we have my very first Hoya. This started off as a six-leaf cutting, and this is my Hoya Lacanosa. You can see she's growing, got new growth coming out. Just really looking good, doing good. It was supposed to be a Carnosa uh, snow cap, but apparently it had reverted, and the store sold it to me for $5, and look at the beautiful plant she is. I just love her. Just recently put some cuttings back in to try to fill out the basket there. And they seem to be taken really nicely. So I hope to have a nice full basket of this real soon. Right next to that, we have my Hoya Sunrise, which as you know, is half Lacanosa. And look at those splashy, splashy leaves. They're just looking gorgeous. Look at that. I just love it. And this is my miracle plant. Not that I really believe in such a thing, but if we go down here and we look really deep in there, See that one leaf, that one little leaf right there? That leaf was the only leaf of my Hoya Sunrise that survived. That leaf, if you haven't heard the story, lived in a propagation box for over 18 months until I finally saw a root on it. Then I took that rooted little leaf and put it into soil, and after about another six months, a stem sprouted out of it, surprising me that it was going to live. I thought I was just going to have a leaf. Look at all the growth that's come. That's been since September of last year. So it's doing really well. I'm considering cutting it soon, but it's in such a growth pattern right now that I'm afraid to cut it. 
And then last but not least is my Hoya Obscura. This is another one that was a gift from Kelly's Hoyas. It's really beautiful. Got a lot of new leaves coming in. Really nice veiny leaves. And this is the other parent of the Sunrise. So that's why it sits there on that little shelf where it's Lacanosa Obscura Make a Sunrise. All right, gang, that's all the Hoya. Let's go back to the plant room. All right, gang, what did you think of all my Hoya? We've got them all watered, those that needed it. We've got them all put back where they go. You can see some of them are back up over here. Which Hoya do I have that you'd like to get? Which Hoya do you have that you think I should get? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to talk about it. Anyhow, gang, I'm going to leave everyone there. And I'm just going to say that... Uh, if you guys found that you learned something in this video, I'd sure appreciate it if you'd buy me a cup of coffee or send me a few dollars or give me a tip or something. Because it takes a lot of money to keep this stuff going and um, my plant clients alone don't pay for everything just yet. So any contributions you guys can help out with, I sure appreciate. Anyhow, I'm going to get off that soapbox because I'm not here to beg you for money. I'm really here to talk about plants and, and teach you about those plants. Make sure you please like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and what else can I say but keep growing things the best you can. Gang, take care. Have a good week. Bye.